Hey guys, what's up? It's Eric with Advanced Level Automotive. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. Today, I'm out here taking a look at this 2006. It's a Chevrolet HHR. It's got the four cylinder engine, 2.2 liter. And the customer complaint is that it's got a misfire. The check engine light is on. The car has been running really rough. So I've got the scan tool connected. Let me take you guys inside and show you what we got. All right guys, so inside the vehicle, I'm gonna go ahead and start this thing up. And if you guys take a look at the instrument cluster, you can see that we do have a check engine light illuminated right there. And so I've got the scan tool connected. Today, we're gonna to be using the Launch X431 Pro 3S Plus. So I'm gonna go into Intelligent Diagnose and let this thing read the VIN number. We have communication. Now I'm gonna go ahead and shut this car off because I can already feel this thing misfiring. And so I'm gonna turn the engine off, but I'm gonna have the ignition on. And so we're gonna go into Diagnostic. From here, we can go into system selection. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and go straight to the ECM engine control module, and we're gonna read fault codes. All right, so as you can see here, we have two fault codes stored in the memory. Uh, first of all, we have this PO300 engine misfire detected. That's going to be an important one because like I said, that's the main complaint here is that the engine is running rough, it's misfiring, it's jerking, it's stuttering. So that's gonna be our main focus. You can also see that we do have this PO455 evaporative emission system large leak detected. Now I don't know whether or not this code was there before the misfire was there, but I'm pretty sure that these are two separate concerns. Now, typically with an EVAP leak, uh, it doesn't generally affect the drivability of the engine. I mean, it can in some cases, like when you have a stuck open purge valve, uh, that can cause raw fuel to get sucked in through the intake through the EVAP system. However, in this case, I don't believe that that's what we're dealing with. Because if you look at our fuel gauge, you'll notice that right now, uh, we're sitting somewhere around a quarter of a tank of fuel right down there. Typically fuel only gets sucked into the EVAP system whenever the tank is usually close to full. And so I'm gonna keep this code in the back of my mind. However, I'm not going to focus on this PO455. We're gonna mainly focus on this PO300. Okay, so unfortunately the PO300 doesn't tell us exactly which cylinder is misfiring. It basically is just telling us that we have some type of random misfire happening. It could be one or two or more cylinders misfiring. And so one of the cool things that we can do with the scan tool is we can go into the data stream. We'll choose engine controls. And if you look here, we have a selection for misfire data. So I'm gonna select this. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and select any of these data pids that have anything to do with misfires. And so you can see we have cylinder misfire number one, number two, number three, number four. We also have misfire history. So we're gonna select all of those as well. So with all of those selected, we're gonna go ahead and hit okay. Now, before we even start this engine up to take a look at these current misfires, we can scroll down here and take a look at the misfire history. And check that out guys, you can see that we have a cylinder number one misfire happening and we have a cylinder number four misfire happening. Now, one of the things I do notice while looking at these cylinder number one and cylinder number four misfires is that cylinder number four seems to be misfiring almost twice as much as cylinder number one. And so we're just gonna keep that in the back of our minds, but let me go ahead and start this engine up and we're gonna watch these misfire counters. Okay, so up here at the top, you can see our cycles of misfire data. Essentially what this is, it's a counter for misfires. And so every time it hits 100, it's gonna go back down to zero and it's going to refresh everything here. And so if you watch, you can see the misfires happening here, cylinder number one, cylinder number two, three, and four. And right now, if you look, the only cylinder that's misfiring right now is going to be cylinder number four. If you pay attention to the cycles of misfire, you're gonna see that once this hits 100, it's going to refresh everything and it's gonna start all over again. So watch it, it's getting up to 80, 90, and 100. And you can see it zeroed out. And so it's going to do its cycle again. Okay guys, so after running for a few seconds, I can actually feel the misfire getting stronger and stronger. And if you pay attention here, uh, cylinder number four, you can see the misfire counter going up pretty high. You can see it's getting to 50, 60, uh, 70, 80, 90, got over 100. So our misfire on cylinder number four is actually getting higher than our misfire cycle timer. And so that just goes to show you how strong the misfire is on cylinder number four. Check it out, it's getting up to 120, 130, almost 140 right there before it reset the timer. And still, we did not see any activity on cylinder number one. That just goes to show you that misfire counters are not always perfect. Sometimes when you have a bad misfire that's happening, oftentimes it can cause other cylinders to also count as well. Check it out, you can see number one is starting to count here. But if you look, we're only at eight here and we're at 60 over here. And so again, 
more than likely what's happening is that this cylinder here is misfiring so bad that it's causing a lot of crankshaft signal variation and that's what's causing these other cylinders to count. So I'm gonna go ahead and shut this thing off because we don't wanna have it running too long. Of course, misfires can cause catalyst damage and so we don't wanna damage the catalytic converter. It seems to me it's pretty likely that we might have a problem with maybe a bad ignition coil, a bad spark plug, maybe even a fuel injector. So let's go ahead and move under the hood and take a look. All right, guys, so moving under the hood, here we have our 2.2 liter four cylinder Ecotec engine. You can see our Ecotec badge right there. Now, one of the things about this engine that I just realized is that um, this cover right here is actually the housing for the air filter. So if I try to pry up on this, um, I really can't remove this without removing the intake tube itself. That does make testing a little bit more difficult because of course under here we have our mass airflow sensor and if you ever want to do some testing in which you need the mass airflow sensor connected but you need access to what's underneath this box that can be a little bit frustrating. Now if I move this box aside I can see that this ignition coil is a design that I'm pretty familiar with. Let me go ahead and remove this intake box assembly so I can give you guys a better look at it. All right, guys, so with the intake box removed, you can see that this here is our coil pack assembly. Now, if you guys are not familiar with this design, uh, essentially what we have is the ignition control module located right here, and it's bolted to this coil pack assembly. Now, there's actually two different coils in here because this is sort of a waste spark ignition design in which there's a coil for the cylinders one and four and a coil for cylinders number two and three. Now, the problem with having a design like this is that it does make testing very difficult, in some cases impossible because everything is built in together. You essentially have no real access to the actual ignition coils. All you have access to is the ignition control module. Now, the only thing that we can really test here at the connector is essentially just the inputs coming in from the computer. And so we're gonna have a cam pulse and we're gonna have a timing pulse coming in uh, from the engine computer. It basically takes those inputs, then uses that to determine when to fire the ignition coils. Now we know that we pretty much have a dead misfire on cylinder number four. So we can probably rule out the possibility of having a bad ignition control module. Because if you guys think about it, if the ignition control module, maybe the driver was bad for cylinders number one and four, we would have a constant misfire on both cylinders number one and four. So the possibilities here are that we could have maybe a bad spark plug, maybe a bad boot for the coil, maybe even a bad or weak ignition coil. We could also have maybe a faulty fuel injector. It could be clogged or dirty. That's a possibility. So there are some tests that I do wanna go ahead and do before we condemn any part. Now I will tell you from experience, these ignition coil housings are known for having problems. And so more than likely, it's probably just gonna be a bad ignition coil assembly. However, this part is pretty expensive. And so I'm gonna try to do as much testing as I can. Okay, so one of the quickest and easiest tests that we can do to rule out a problem with the fuel injectors is do a fuel injector balance test. Now, it's particularly easy to do it on this vehicle because for one, we have really easy access to the fuel rail right here. Now, if you look, you can see that this is the cap for our Schrader valve. And so if I take it off, it gives us really easy access to connect our fuel pressure gauge. So I'm gonna go ahead and connect this thing. All right, so I've got my fuel gauge connected. Now, let me show you something that's really cool. Inside of the scan tool, we can actually control the fuel injectors in order to do a fuel injector balance test. And so if we come in here and go to actuation test, we'll go into fuel system. You can see that we have an option for fuel injector balance. And so I'm gonna click on that. It says to ensure all of the fuel lines are connected, we'll hit okay. Now it tells us to connect the fuel pressure gauge to the fuel line. We already have it connected, it's right here. So I'm gonna hit okay. Now it says each injector can only be flowed or pulsed once per ignition cycle. So if we wanna do this more than one time, we're gonna have to crank the engine over, of course, because we don't wanna hydrolock the engine. And so this test is only going to allow us to do it once per ignition cycle. And so I'm gonna click on okay. Then we can start by clicking on injector number one and take a look at the system. You can see that it primed it up to 40 PSI. And now we're gonna hit yes, and that's going to pulse the injector and watch that gauge. You can see it go down from 40 to about 31. And now we're gonna hit okay. And we're going to do injector number two and we're going to compare what that looks like. Priming the fuel system, you can see it primed it up to about 40 PSI. Now we're gonna hit yes to pulse the injector. You can hear the injector pulsing and it landed in the same spot. And so we're gonna hit okay. And then we're gonna do number three. And we essentially just wanna see uh, if all of these injectors are flowing the same. So it's primed it up. Now we're gonna click yes. You can hear the injector clicking. Watch that needle and you can see it lands in about the same spot. And then finally injector number four. 
which is our trouble cylinder. So it's priming up the fuel system now. Now it's ready for us to test. We'll hit yes. You can hear that injector clicking and it landed in pretty much the exact same spot. So at this point, we can pretty much rule out a problem with the fuel injector because we know they're all flowing about the same. All right, guys, so now that we ruled out a problem with the fuel injector, uh, we can move on to this ignition coil. And like I said, I'm pretty sure that it's just gonna need a new coil. However, I'm just trying to do as many tests as I can before I make the call. And so one of the things I wanna try to do next is I'm gonna go ahead and unbolt this coil pack and I'm gonna lift it off. And what I wanna try to do is I'm gonna use this little spark gap tester here uh, to see if we can test the strength of the spark coming out of our cylinder number four ignition coil. So let me go ahead and remove this thing. There we go. All right, guys, so I've got the ignition coil pack removed. Now, one of the first things I like to look for are signs of carbon tracking. That can indicate to us whether or not we have a leak in maybe one of these boots. Now, if you look over here all the way to the right, this is going to be our cylinder number four. And so if we take a close look at it, looking all the way around this boot, I don't see any signs of carbon tracking or any signs that a spark is leaking outside of the boot. And so just doing a visual inspection, this number four boot looks pretty good. Now, the other thing I like to look for is maybe oil in the spark plug hole. Now, I don't think we're gonna have any in there because this boot is pretty much dry. However, if you look in there, you guys can see this hole is pretty much dry. So like I said, I'm gonna go ahead and connect our spark tester and we'll see if this tells us anything. All right, guys, so let me show you my setup. Over here on cylinder number four is where we have our spark gap tester. Now, if you look at the adjustment screw, you can see that I have it set somewhere between 20 and 30. I'm just kind of going moderate right now to begin with. And if you look at my lead, I have it connected to just a block ground over here. Now, as far as the other three, I don't want to leave them open and not grounded. And so what I did was I took a few of my leads over here. I have a green lead, a yellow lead, and then I have a red lead and I have them all attached to a block ground. And if you look at the other end of the lead, you can see that I'm just using these banana style uh, plugs and that actually fits right in there. So now that I have everything set up, I'm going to go ahead and set the camera up to focus on this. We're going to crank this engine over and see what our spark looks like. All right, guys, so I didn't see any spark on the first test. So what I went ahead and did was moved in the screw adjuster. And so you guys can see that I have it set somewhere around 20. And so I'm gonna go ahead and crank the engine over. Okay, guys, so as you can see there, we did have spark. Now what I went ahead and did was I moved the adjuster back out a little bit. And so I'm gonna try to crank it over again. So we had pretty strong spark there. I went ahead and I moved it back out to about 30 kV. We're gonna try it one more time. So as you can see, we didn't have any spark there. And so it seems like we're losing it somewhere around 25 kV. Now what I wanna to try to do is I wanna go ahead and compare the cylinder next to it and see what kind of reading we can achieve with that. All right guys, so now I'm on cylinder number three. I'm gonna go ahead and crank the engine over and see what we got. Big difference between cylinder number four and cylinder number three. Number three had a much stronger spark, even at 25 kV, whereas the number four didn't show anything at 25 kV. I'm gonna try and move this up to 30 and see if we can get spark. All right, guys, so I moved it up to 30 just to see if we can get spark. I'm gonna go ahead and crank the engine over and see what happens. Check that out, guys. We definitely had way stronger spark on cylinder number three than we did on number four. At this point, there's no question about it. This thing's gonna need a new ignition coil. All right, guys, so luckily, the parts store down the road had the part that we needed, and this is an OEM GM AC Delco product. That's our part number right there if you're looking for one. So I'm gonna go ahead and install this. Now, what I also went ahead and did was got a set of AC Delco spark plugs. It is recommended that if you're gonna replace this ignition coil and you haven't done the spark plugs yet, make sure you replace the spark plugs because having worn out spark plugs can cause damage to the ignition coils over the long term. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these parts installed and I'll show you the final results. Just a quick tip here. Um, if you buy the AC Doco part, 
it's not going to come with the ignition control module. And so when I talked to the guys over at the parts department, uh, they told me they had an NGK unit that was about the same price as the AC Delco one, and it comes with the ignition control module. Not only that, the AC Delco one does not come with new boots. And so you're required to have to take the boots off of the old one and put it onto the new coil pack. And so I'd rather just replace the whole thing. So I'm going to run back to the parts store. I'm going to exchange this AC Delco for an NGK part, and I'll be right back. A few moments later. All right, guys, so fast forward. I went ahead and I got the new NGK ignition coil. Now, if you guys take a look, you can see that this one does come with a brand new ignition control module, and it comes with new boots. Now, if you guys want to know, the part number is right there, 48707. Uh, it's either that or the U6026. I'm not exactly sure, but like I said, I feel a lot safer changing the complete unit. NGK is a very well-known and high-quality brand. I would definitely say they're up there with the OEM product, maybe even better sometimes. Now, just to be clear, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with the original ignition control module. Like I said, our problem really was just in the ignition coil. However, this vehicle has well over 100,000 miles on it, and so... If you're going to be replacing the ignition coil and the spark plugs, you may as well replace the ignition control module because this thing is probably at the end of its life anyway, especially if you can buy the entire assembly like I did for the same cost as buying just the ignition coils in the AC Delco. So I'm going to go ahead and get this thing installed. We'll start this thing up and we'll see how it runs. All right, guys, so I've got everything installed. I'm going to go ahead and start the vehicle up. Seems to be idling pretty smooth. So I'm going to go ahead and take the scan tool and we are going to uh, reconnect. Whoop, hit diagnosis, engine control module. We'll go ahead and select our misfire counters. Now, before we take a look at these misfire counters, I need to mention that I have not cleared the check engine light yet. And so we still have history. We scroll down here, you can see we still have the misfire history from before. However, if we look at our current misfires, one through four, you can see that we have no misfires at all. So far, the engine is running great. It's idling nice and smooth. I don't feel it jerking or stuttering like it did before. And so this is definitely a fix. The only thing left for me to do is to go ahead and clear the fault codes, which if we back out of the menu here, we can go ahead and hit clear fault code. Are you sure you wanna clear the fault codes? Yes, DTC information cleared. Now we can go back into read fault code and you can see that we have no trouble code stored in the engine computer. Now, as far as the EVAP code goes, the one that we had when we first got here, I did notify the customer about it. I told him not to worry about it at the moment. I said, drive the vehicle, and if the code comes back, then we'll take a look at it and see what it is. However, at the moment, it's probably nothing to worry about. You know, it is possible that maybe somebody might have left the gas cap loose, and that's why that code got set to begin with. Now, as far as us replacing the ignition coil for our misfire, that was definitely a fix. By the way, if you guys were curious, this is what the old spark plugs look like. Yeah, they were pretty, pretty worn out. So it was definitely time for them to get replaced. All right, guys, well, there you have it. A quick and easy way to test your ignition coils by using a little tool like this. Now, if you guys don't already have something like this, I would definitely recommend picking it up and putting one in your arsenal. If you guys are looking for one, I will leave a link down in the description below. Now, anything that you guys buy through my Amazon affiliate link, I do get a small commission on. So it does go toward helping the channel. Thank you guys for all of the support. Anyway, at this point, I'm gonna end off the video. Like I always say, I hope you found the video useful, informational, educational, entertaining. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you haven't done so already, make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks.